Well, we've reached the halfway point of the race, and we've now had 50 submissions. Osric normally removes the question marks on a Wednesday, but things are so tantalizing, he's going to keep them for another day at least. We'll start with Unlimited, where there were a few ship class cha- yeah, few ship changes. Shockbait decided they would swap out the Type 7 for Mamba, adding another new ship class to the table. They learned very quickly it doesn't exactly steer very well. And they also had a far greater worry to contend with. Cockpit Cat, who tried to sabotage one of the landings and caused massive hull damage. I have had issues with this as well, and have died several times thanks to certain cockpit kitties. Fortunately, the ship made it round in one piece, unlike certain times <clears throat> I have. And it was an improvement, knocking off a couple minutes. We also had Tobias, who swapped to the DBX and managed to knock off a bit more time too, moving tantalizingly close to Edelgard. Sir Boundless also managed to knock another minute off their time, adding yet another ship class to the fray, is the first appearance of the Imperial Courier. Quite late in the Buckyball race, typically a classic, but it was good old Epiphus who brought in his first appearance too. He did manage to make it in front of Edelgard, pushing up into the 19 minute bracket. I'm turning off my humility for a minute. We have one last entry in Unlimited, and it's me, Commander Bruski who decided that I would also fly an Ash Scout because it is 100% absolutely the best ship around the course, and on his first run managed to nail everything. Most underrated, bestest ever. I'm sorry, DPX. I loved you for a long time. Gotta say, the Ash Scout, it's so shiny. It stops on a dime. It twists, it turns, it does flips. What more could you want? Um, But I'm going to put my success down, actually not to that, but it is the new color scheme, the UI HUD I've been sporting inside my ship. It was made by Coach Z, is called Purple and Orange EDHM, and it is purple, so it is the best. And I've been staring at orange for so many months, it makes my eyes practically bleed. And pro tip for anybody out there who is maybe new to buckyball racing or could use a bit of a tip, um, you fly better if your eyes aren't bleeding. I'm the first pilot to break the 18-minute barrier and push into the 17s. On to regulation, where we had a few new entries and a lot of improvements. We had Edelgard moving themselves much closer to Alex, but still staying in that 24-minute bracket. <clears throat> Sulu. However, the improvement was crucial because behind it was all change. Sulu also had a big improvement, knocking a minute off his time and would have been ahead of Edelgard. But again, the improvement was vital because the first of the new entries was Epiphus, who slotted in his Cobra into the 25-minute bracket, filling out the spot vacated by Sulu. Our next new entry didn't do initially as well in regulation as he did in Unlimited, not by a long shot. But Bruski still managed to get the Cobra in under 25 minutes. Go me. There was some discussion among the judging panel, Osric's head, as to whether any time should be docked for the disparaging way he spoke about the Cobra in the race comments. But Osric decided to let it slide, this time. And that was his mistake, because now he's given me a platform to discuss just how abysmal the Cobra is in comparison to the best ship. The Asp Scout, as mentioned, it flips, it turns, it spins on a dime, it will, I don't know, probably comb your hair, Pet your dog, walk your dog, and get the groceries while you wait. And you go from flying that to flying the Cobra, and all of a sudden you realize that the Cobra is a broken, busted ship because the yaw thrusters don't work at all. Not a single damn one of them. Sure, it goes up and down. It can turn. But it can't go like this at all. Sure, it can spin and pitch. But it is a 2D ship in a 3D game, and you can't fly a 2D ship in a 3D game because it doesn't turn. That's a little bit of a problem for a racer. We'll see if I get kicked out of the race now. Anyways, the final new entry was from Kevin the Stabber, and it's time for the Rizla once again, as virtually taking the pain off of Sulu's ship, he managed to slot himself narrowly into fourth place. And another sub-25 minute run, apparently that's the magic number everybody's going to hit this time. In the race for podium places, Alec managed to put some more time between himself and Edelgard and draw closer to Skur breaking the 24 minute barrier. So now in addition to the four positions separated by less than 30 seconds in unlimited, we have four positions separated by less than 30 seconds in regulation. And that folks 
is what we call a tight race, and we love to see it. So good luck to everyone in the second half of the race. You've made it to hump day. Now start humping that race course. And please, please, get those super cruise reports in, because that'd be great.